All right, we're back. We're on page six of notes two of Calc A B. Basically, talking about the chain rule, we're doing a problem here that uh, is pretty involved. Um, so we've got an R of T, a G of X. So we have two different independent variables, kind of an issue. Uh, we looked through, did some problems that kind of uh, get you familiar with what the functions are doing. Uh, so we found the time uh, that the speed reached a certain value. We found the average rate of change, which is just algebra and slope, um, and looked at the units of that. Uh, we looked at how much gas the car uses to travel a certain amount, and we found it was 70 liters. Uh, we, on this problem, we, we tried to go kind of in depth on like what the units will be for a function, for its derivative. I suggest that the easiest way to figure out the units of the derivative is to actually sketch a tangent line to the original function and look at units over units. You can kind of work them out. Made a table to summarize it. I think that's going to help us on the next part. So let's see. We want to find the rate of change with respect to time. So this is interesting. The rate of change with respect to time of the number of liters of gallon, of, I'm sorry, liters of gasoline used by the car when T equals three hours. So just what are we looking for here? So it's uh, the rate of change with respect to time. So with respect to time, so that's D something DT. So DT is definitely going on the bottom of this rate that we're looking for, because with respect to time. So it'll be, uh, we want something dt. Uh, all right, so the rate of change of what with respect to time? The rate of change of the number of liters of gasoline. Okay, so now we have to figure out like what gives us the number of liters of gasoline used by a car. Um, so if we look back at our function, well, our functions, uh, R of T is the speed in kilometers per hour, so that's not it. Uh, G of T is the number of liters of gasoline. So uh, we can see there, liters of gasoline use. So G is the liters of gasoline. So we actually are looking for DG DT, the rate of change of G, the number of liters of gasoline with respect to time. We want DG DT. Now the issue is G is actually a function of X. You can see up here, um, G is a function of X, which means to get DG DT, we're probably gonna use the chain rule, right? So what would the units be on this answer? Um, so let's, let's take a look at that, because I think that knowing the units of the answer can be really instructive in terms of how you can go about finding the answer. Um, so the, the units that we want are, so liters of gasoline, so it'll be liters per, um, time is measured in hours. So we want liters per hour. Now the reason I think it's useful to know that is because if you are totally lost, what you can do is look at all the functions that you have, right? And we kind of summarize them in this table over here. So we had function, units in, units out, right? Look at all of those. We want to get liters per hour. Look at all the units that you have and come up with something that will give you liters per hour. So I can see right away that if I do for some reason, and maybe well, we're going to try to work out what the reason is, but if I do kilometers per hour, which is R of T, if I do kilometers per hour and I multiply that by liters per kilometer, the kilometers will cancel and I'll get liters per hour. So this looks like I'm trying to get this. So let me see, let me see if this makes sense to me. So dg dt, from a chain rule standpoint, g is a function of x. So it could be uh, dg dx. Now, what would I need to multiply that by to end up with dg dt? It would have to be, so uh, if you think of it as the dx is canceling, it would have to be dx dt. If we do this, we'll end up with dg dt. This is a chain rule problem. Now, what is dx dt? Well, that's a different question. Um, so x, if we go back to the definition of a function, um, x, is, uh, x is the number of kilometers traveled. So travel x kilometers. So dx dt is the rate of change of kilometers per hour. It's kilometers per hour. What gives us kilometers per hour? Well, look at this function, kilometers per hour. So it's actually r of t is dx dt. That's kind of crazy. So you might have to think about that for a second. 
Uh, we've already actually worked that out in our table also. If you look here, we had kilometers per hour. R of T is dx dt. So this is noteworthy. Uh, so over here, I'm gonna say dx dt is actually R of T. R of T was a rate of change. So R of T is not a function that just spits out like linear units. It spits out kilometers per hour. You give it uh, a certain hour, it'll tell you kilometers per hour. It is the rate of change of something. What's it the rate of change of? Kilometers. Um, so dx dt is R of T. So that's good. Um, DG, so dg dx is, is a thing we can directly find, right? That's g prime of x. Not a problem. What is a problem is that we are interested in this when t equals 3. OK, well, I'll definitely be able to find r of 3, because I can just plug that in once I define it on the calculator. So I can find that. What I don't necessarily know is I need to know so this is, a, this is a new question we need to answer. I need to know what is x when t equals 3? So how far have I gone? So from t equals 0 to t equals 3, how far did I go? Because I need to take how far I went and plug that in to g prime to figure out dg dx. So now our job is to figure that out. And again, if you are unfamiliar with the concept that I'm about to do because it's very much a, a review uh, of math analysis stuff. You know what? It's not going to hurt you to skip this problem for now. Come back to it uh, like in mid December. Not even kidding. Mid December. Uh, right now it's probably like early September. Come back in mid December, and this problem will make a lot more sense to you. And if it's not making sense, that's fine. Don't don't worry about it. Come back later. No harm, no foul. What I'm going to do is I'm going to figure out what x is. X is, right, the number of kilometers gone. So this is kilometers from t equals 0 to t equals 3. I'm going to figure that out right now. And I'm going to do it by doing something that we did in math analysis. I think it notes 18 or 17, one of those. So what gives me kilometers? Um, kilometers comes from, uh, well, R of t is kilometers per hour, looking at my table. So let me draw a little picture here. I'm going to draw a picture of, so I'm going to draw a picture of R of T. Well, kind of. I mean, I don't really care if this is what R of T looks like exactly. So R of T. And then uh, I know I need to go from 0 to 3. So R of T is in kilometers per hour. And T is in hours. So if I were to, I think I just turned on the light here. I don't actually know how I did that. I like flipped a switch or something. Let me turn that off. Okay. Uh, I don't know how I did that. Um, okay. So if I multiply the units, kilometers per hour times hours, that gives me just kilometers, which means area underneath this curve is actually measured in kilometers. So this is one of the big ideas of calculus that we can kind of find the area of the region bounded by a rate to find a total. So I'm going to try to do that. So to do that, this is all review if you've done it before. If not, seriously, stop watching. It's just going to kind of scare you. And it's not a scary thing, but it looks scary when you first do it. All right, I'm going to have a delta t, which is going to be 3 minus 0 divided by n. So it's where you stop, which is t equals 3, minus where you start, which is t equals 0, divided by n the number of slices that you're going to make. Now, we're going to make n equal 10,000 according to the problem. So use 10,000 as the upper bound. Doesn't really matter right now. We'll, we'll get to that with the calculator. I need a t sub i. So what's t sub i? t sub i is where I'm going to evaluate the function. This is t sub 1, t sub 2, dot, dot, dot. 3 is actually t sub n, t sub 10,000 in this case. Doesn't really matter. Um, it's where you start, so 0 plus i delta t, which is 3i over n. Okay, each rectangle then has an area. So this is an area of one rectangle is r of t sub i times delta t. Base times height, right? The base is delta t. The height is r of t sub i. Once we have that, 
we want to add those up. So this is where, you know, uh, it's a lot. There's a lot to remember. So the total area, this was the area of one rectangle, total area, which has units kilometers, right? That'll be the total kilometers that we've gone, is the sum from i equals one to n of r of t sub i times delta t. Okay, this is going to equal x. What x is it going to equal? It's going to equal the x that we're going to plug in. So let me rewrite, let me rewrite this using this notation. So we're trying to find dg dt, which is going to be dg dx is actually just g prime of x times dx dt is actually r of t. So this will be r of three. And this value that we're gonna find here, this x is this. This is the most involved problem that we've done all year so far. Um, and it just has a lot of steps. And later in life, we'll learn ways to get around some of these steps, but like we need to work through the concept anyway, um, even when we know those faster ways. So at this point, I think we're good. I'm gonna switch to the calculator. I'm gonna find what x is, I'll write it down. I'm gonna find g prime of x, I'm gonna find r of x, r of three rather, sorry. R is a function of t, g prime is a function of x. I'm gonna find the x value um, and then multiply them and see what we get. So I'm gonna switch to the calculator. This is where things have been going wrong lately. Uh, so hopefully, hopefully it doesn't. Uh, I, I need to define my functions. So uh, let's add calculator page. Okay, get r of t is 80 quantity one minus e to the negative 15 t squared. And then I need g of x is 0 0.07 x times, which is not optional because there's gonna be a parenthesis, and then e to the negative x over three. Okay, so what should I do first? Um, if it's gonna break, it's probably gonna break when I try to find uh, that value of x. So I feel like I should start there. Um, so I'm gonna do the sum. So use a template from i equals one to 10,000 of um, r, the function we defined of, uh, it's zero plus three i over n. So I'm just gonna write three i over n is 10,000, one, two, three, um, times three over 10,000, two, three. Okay, so this answer will be x. x is the number of kilometers traveled between zero and three. And we need to know that because that is the value. So I'm gonna write, I'm gonna write that down. It'll be in the notes if we manage to get back to them. So x is approximately 221.706 kilometers. Okay, so now I'm gonna find the derivative of g. So let's, let's just find that, right? Derivative. Uh, with respect to x of g of x. Okay, whatever, whatever that is. It doesn't really matter to us because we need to evaluate that at x equals this. Okay, 0 0.07, that's insane. Um, so we're gonna get 0 0.07 times, so let me, if you'll bear with me, I'm, I'm also handwriting this as we go. So it's gonna be g prime of 221.706 times um, r of three. So what is r of three? r of three is, it, is 80. It's like exactly 80, that's weird. It's not exactly 80, it's just super close to 80. It's actually this. Um, but so I just need to do 80 times 0 0.07 times this. Well, okay, so not 0 0.07, but like really basically 0.07. If 5.6, okay, so I'm gonna write that down. Then we're done with the calculator part. I'm gonna go back uh, and kind of highlight something. So 5.6, is that correct? To, I mean, yeah, that's that's very correct to three decimal places. I'm gonna do zero, zero, because I think three decimals is something you should always write, even when you like don't really need to, just to get in the habit of it. Uh, so let's see, back here, so we did, we did a lot of weird stuff in this problem. This problem, uh, probably a little uncomfortable for some of you, and that's, that's okay, learning is uncomfortable. All right, so 
let me just highlight a little of what we did. When we found the total area here, right? We did that summation on the calculator. That gave us X. That is measured in kilometers. We needed to know kilometers because G is a function of kilometers traveled. So we traveled 221.706 kilometers. So what we found is G prime of that number, right? And so G prime has units, liters per kilometer. Then we multiplied by R of three, which is here. R of three was 0.07, it doesn't really matter. R has units kilometers per hour. If you multiply those units, we end up with the units of liters per hour. And that is our final answer. This is the most advanced chain rule problem that we've done by miles or kilometers, I guess, uh, at this point. But that's our final answer. So that's how you would do this problem. This problem, you have to think about this problem a lot to make it make sense to you. We're going to encounter several problems that are like this throughout the year. It's kind of like one of those things where it's like, do you really, really understand or do you just think you understand? If you just think you understand, keep reading through it. Try to make sense of it. Follow the units. That's my, that's my um, best advice is to follow the units on this and you will see what happened. Trickiest part is we didn't know what X was. We didn't know how many kilometers we had gone by the time T equal three. So we had to go back and find that and to do that, you needed a lot of math. So basically everything that I wrote in blue is review from last year. Um, so anyway, I, I'm going to end this here. Uh, hopefully you were able to uh, follow a lot of it and make sure you ask questions about it when you have them. And uh, I will see you in the next video. So I hope you found this helpful.